that has taken place. There's no covering. People will try to cover it with their own ways. But it can't be covered by fig leaves. They'll try to cover their spiritual nakedness doing things. It seems good. Can I tell you something? Good works is great, but we're not saved by works. We're saved by grace. I believe works follows grace. Don't get me wrong, folks, without works is dead. The works testify that we belong to Him. But listen, if you're sitting out there today thinking, if I do this, I do that. If I'm just a good person, you know, if I don't hurt nobody, I'll make it in. Let me tell you, you're just as deceived as the homosexual. You're just as deceived as those that's in Islam and going any other way. Why? Because, let me tell you, you can be good all day and still miss the kingdom of God if you're not born again. But many will try to cover it with their fig leaves. Try to cover it with their own works. Try to cover it with their own deeds. Try to cover it to try to appear to be religious. If you ever get on Facebook, you'll find some people that appear religious, but the evidence of it is not really there. One, they'll try to tell you they love Jesus, but the next moment they're cussing up a storm. And you think you want to just roll your eyes back in your head. Let me tell you, you can't serve two masters. You'll cling to one. Or cling to the other. You can't serve God and mammon alone. If you love him, you'll keep his commandments. Let me tell you, no work anything you do. Just because you post a post on a social website, don't make you a Christian. Just because you do some good works, don't make you a child of God. The only thing that can cover that spiritual nakedness is the blood of Jesus Christ. The only one that can write your name in the Lamb's book of life is the blood of Jesus Christ. The only one that will take you to heaven is Jesus Christ today. You can't get in by your works. You can't get in by your deeds. You can't get in by keeping the law. We are saved by grace and by grace alone. Don't get me wrong. If you love him, you're going to follow his commandments. Yeah, no doubt. It's just evidence that who you're in love with, that you've been born again. But yeah, listen. If I'm a child of God, I'm going to be a reflection of my father. Notice little children, little boys. They'll want to grow up and be like their daddy, won't they? They'll walk like their daddy. They'll talk like their daddy. They'll try to imitate him. Imitation is the goodest form of flattery. When you're bought, when you're a child of God, you're going to be a reflection of the one that you serve. You're going to be a reflection of the one that's grabbed a hold of you and written your names in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's the same way. Those that's bound in sin, they're a reflection of who their father. One of the greatest misconceptions in the world today is that we're all children of God's children. That's wrong. We're not all God's children. Everybody was God's creation, but not God's children. You're not a child of God until you're bought with the blood and your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Jesus told the religious people, the Pharisees, He said, you're of your father the devil. He was a liar from the beginning, and he was the father of lies. Let me tell you, you're not a child of God until your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, until that blood has been been poured upon you, until that's, you've accepted that blood sacrifice. And the only one that can do that today is Jesus Christ. The third thing I noticed about this young man, real quick, he neither abode in the house, but he abode in the tombs. It seems death strangles Everything man touches because of the fall. It's a picture of really of one who does not dwell in the house of God, but rather in the tombs. What are you talking about? I'm talking about when you begin to live in the world, you're dwelling in the graveyard right there. The system of this world is nothing more than a graveyard. The system of alcohol, drugs, the system of perversion, the system 
of those things that is wrong before God is nothing more than a graveyard. This world, the, the things of this world, people want to dwell in the tombs of this world. People want to dwell among the dead things that don't give life. Sin does not give life, but it costs life. It, that death is a picture of the sinful ways of the world. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The very moment God told, first of all, let's go back, established God told him, you shall eat of, you can eat of every tree in the garden, but one do not touch. The moment you, if you touch of that, you shall die. That was the very thing that Satan challenged Eve on right then and there. Did God really say this? God really said that. The very moment they took a bite of that forbidden fruit, they didn't die physically that day. It crept into the world, but they died spiritually that day. We tell you, spiritual death is far worse than physical death. People today don't understand that the wages of the sin is death. They don't under, think about it. How Satan's on the rampage in these tombs. You hear of young men, women, older people overdosing on drugs. You hear about drunk drivers colliding, hitting the innocent, killing their cells. It's a picture of sin. Sin will take you farther than you ever imagined. If you don't believe sin costs us anything, ask they can. It cost him and his house, him and his household. Their life. If you don't believe sin will cost, cost us anything, ask Adam and Eve. They even had one of their sons kill another. Sin is deadly. Look at today. Look around today. But I want you to know the gift of God still is eternal life. But that's what it seems like many people, they're grave dwellers tonight. People who are dwelling in the things of this world instead of the things of God. People who are living for a moment of pleasure and not the spiritual things. People that are pleasing to the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, and the lust of the flesh. And they're perishing and don't even realize they're that club one, they got one foot on the banana peel. And it's they're slipping it into a grave and don't even realize how close it is. People want to dwell among the tombs of the world, the things that will cost them their life. People want to have it, but I'm telling you, they don't understand. Yes, the devil will promise them a little pleasure, and the Bible never denies the pleasure of sin. But the Bible says there is pleasure in sin, but it lasts for a season. Once that season's over, that pleasure, that sinful desire requires the penalty. There is a penalty for the pleasure of sin, and that penalty is death. It's that simple. This young man was dwelling in the tombs, a picture of many today that are living among the tombs, but I got news that Jesus Christ came to the tomb. He had an appointment with this demon possessed Gadarene. This day, this young man would have a change. When Jesus comes, he would go from a grave dweller to an evangelist, just like that. Just one touch, everything gets made different. Verse 28 and 29, when he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him. And with a loud voice said, what have I to do with you, Jesus, you son of God? Most high, I beseech you, torment me not. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For oftentimes it caught him, and he was bound with chains and feathers. And he broke the bands, and he was driven of the devil into the wilderness. Understand, this young, that devil had chains and feathers. It had him in bondage. And it would take one stronger than the strong man to go into the strong man's house to bind him up. This young man had a, a, an appointment. This young man had a, an appointment by a physician. This physi he wasn't going to the physician office, but the physician was coming to where he was. He made a house visit right there, didn't he? Think about how Jesus came into the world, just as in that tomb. 
He come there to set man free and he came into this world that we can have life and we can have eternal life today to set us free. He came in here today that we don't have to go into a place called hell, but we can have eternal life that we can enter into his presence to abide with him forever. The my Bible tells me and it tells you for who the sun sets free is free indeed. This young man was bound, just like countless others are today. There are many that are bound. There are many that are feathered up and shackled up and they can't break the bondages on their own. They, that devil is driving them in their chains, in their feathers, that restraint they, it has on them. He couldn't break it on his own. Uh-oh. I could go here for a little bit. Okay, let me just stop right here for a minute and tell you. They'll, the world will try to send you to an atheistic, ungodly psychiatrist to try to solve the root of your problems. <laughs> I got news for you. They're not going to set you free. They're going to try to control that issue. No good. Let me tell you, the world does not have the answer for man, for those that's bound like that. The answer to set one free is Jesus Christ. The world will tell you, the system of the world will tell you, you're still a recovering alcoholic. But my Bible tells me when he gets a hold of you, you're a new creation in Christ Jesus. You're not what you used to be. You're a new man. And when he sets you free, you are free in deed. He ain't going to control it. They'll try to give you medicines. They'll give you medicines sometimes to add issues to it. They'll try to feed you medicine that'll feed that demon. They'll, they'll try to give you medicine to try to control it. And let me tell you, the answer truly is Jesus Christ. The world, the reason they give you that is because they have no answer. They just try to control it. They can't really set you free. But the true answer is Jesus Christ. They'll tell you you're a product of your environment. But I can tell you that is debunked from the Word of God. You're a product of an evil heart. Go back to the garden. It was a perfect environment, wasn't it? But they still chose to rebel against God. It's an evil heart. Go and look into the book of Revelation. Even after a thousand years of perfect rain, Satan will be loosed and there'll still be many that will throw their lot in after being in another perfect environment. While the heart of man is continuously evil and the heart has to be changed only by Jesus Christ. Many are bound. Verse 30 through 37. And Jesus asked him, What is your name? He said, Legion, because many devils were entered into him. And they besought him that he would not command them to go out into the deep. And they were a herd of many swine feeding on the mountain. And they besought him that he would suffer them to enter into them. And he suffered them. Then went the devils out of the man and entered into the swine. And the herd ran violently down a steep place in the lake and were choked. And when they were fed them... Them saw what was done, they fled and went and told it into the city and to the country. Then they went out to see what was done and came to Jesus and found this man, out of whom the devils were departed, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed in his right hand. And they were afraid. They also which saw it told them what means he was possessed by devils were healed. Then the whole multitude of the country of the Gadareans round about him besought him to depart from them for they were taken with great fear and he went up into the ship and returned back again now the man was man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might be with him but jesus sent him away saying verse 39 return to your own house and show how great things god has done unto you and he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things jesus had done unto them. Let me tell you, these devils recognized who was coming into their midst. They knew the king. They knew the word of God. They knew who was walking right there. They began to tremble. 
they decided, they said, can we go into the swamp?